Hey guys, Fusebox back on Brave Shadow Legends. Remember, you can find me on YouTube or Rumble. Uh, subscribe, please. It's just a free click of a button. That's all it takes to support me so I can keep doing this. It motivates me. Uh, the likes, the comments, it's more than just a kindness. I mean, they actually help push the algorithms. It's the only way I can reach other people. So thank you so much for your time. If you've never made an actual channel or profile on YouTube, make sure to sign into YouTube. Make yourself a channel so you can leave comments so that we can actually communicate. If you've got questions, I appreciate it. And thank you again for your time. Uh, also, if you share, you can share this with clanmates, anybody that you think it might be useful to, and that'll help me grow. Other than that, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the traps, the traps that player M is setting in front of us. And this will definitely be different according to how you play the game how far along you are in the game. But here's the thing. Of course, as I suggested in a previous video, I always suggest average to free to play players always going for fusions and fragments, but not the way they're doing it right now. So we're going to have to get into what gamble are you going to take and what are you actually going to go for? It's kind of time to make your decisions so that you know how you're going to proceed with the next month. So here's what's going on. You get done with a fragment event, and within a week, they throw this big, beautiful 10x at you. It's got Chris in it. It's got Martyr. It's got a lot of great heroes in it. It's tasty, right? Why do they do this? They do this because you just got done with a fragment event. They want to use up your resources before the next fusion event. So they throw this out in front of you and entice you into using it, and it's amazing. If you want to spend some money and try to get it, that makes perfect sense. But if you're not spending much money, you might want to consider skipping events like this and getting ready for the next guaranteed legendary and then hoping, you know, let the shards fall where they may. Maybe you'll get that crisp during one of those events one day. That's my suggestion. But that's not the only bait trap they've set in front of you. So within a week of this, they're throwing another fusion out. And this is kind of out of place. It really feels too soon. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Now, the guy that you can get, let's just cover him real quick. It's high shield. He's a good hero. He's a solid hero. If you don't have a good shielder, if you're early enough or just, just starting to do fusions and fragments, I totally get one to get him. He has a provoke on his A2. It looks like it'll be on a pretty short cooldown. We'll wait and see, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll be a three-turn cooldown. He, has, he can throw up a shield. Oh, on that provoke, he breaks attack. He can put up a shield. Uh, probably on a three turn cooldown for 30% of his HP. If he does even moderate damage, this guy's going to be pretty solid. You'll want to build him high HP and high defense, but he's the kind of guy you throw in the middle of your favorite heroes to keep everybody protected as you go through Doom Tower waves, etc. So he's a solid champ. Now, you probably have some provokers and maybe you've got a shoulder, but if you're lacking in both departments, he is going to be a pretty amazing hero to get. But here's the problem. You just got done. <clears throat> now, if, you, if you're willing to spend some money to get a ton of extra shards out of place so that you can pull them during this fusion event, that's totally fine. It makes sense. But if you're an average player that, you know, moderately will spend uh, or a low spender and definitely for free to play, I say you take a gamble and wait for the Halloween event. Now, both are doable if you're willing to buy some energy, buy some shards. But if you're not a, you're not wanting to or not able to, then I would say just go straight into Halloween expecting a pretty big hero. All these little bait traps they're setting in front of us make me truly think in my gut we're going to have an amazing Halloween event coming up. Uh, I don't know if it'll be a fusion or fragment because this current one that's coming up next week, that's another thing to remember. It's a fragment slash fusion event, a frag of fusion. And we did this before with Brogni, guys. We went through this before. It was a nightmare. Now, Brogni was worth every step of the way. And admittedly, back then, the biggest hurdle was Arena was broken and low spenders, early players really couldn't get through that threshold on the Arena. But now everything's kind of settled. The Arena is not bad at all right now. So it may be doable and maybe it won't be as brutal because there were like three artifact enhancement events instead of two. Uh, I can't remember. There was a lot of extra work. In a fragment slash fusion, or as I call them, a frag of fusion, this 2.0, you have to get the epics. You earn them by earning their fragments through doing your tournaments, your, your events. 
And once you have them, you have to build them up to 550. Then you've got to, then you turn into fusion mode. You build them to 550, you send them all the way, you combine them to make your legendary hero. Now, there's always a chance that one or two of these epics will be um, amazing and worth going for. And then you won't have to focus so much on the legendary hero. And in that case, a lot of people might get some benefit out of gaining one or two really good epics and moving on into Halloween with all your resources saved. But I just wanted to talk about these traps, these little bait traps. We'll have to see. Maybe this will not be hard at all. Maybe this maybe they learned from Brogni. And this guy is by no means a Brogni. Okay, he's a good hero. He's definitely worth having, but he's not a Brogni. So if they're asking that kind of demanding time and resources, then I say it's going to be better to gamble on there being an amazing event during Halloween. The first Halloween, I was not playing the game. But that's where Madame Cerise came out, Miscreated Monster, Harvest Jack, a bunch of amazing heroes. Well, the next one was Elegaeus. It was a fragment event. And yeah, he's much better than people give him credit for. He's just not flashy. He's locking out cooldowns, but he's not doing giant nukes, and he's not putting up hills that you can see tangibly. But I'm telling you, he's overlooked. He's a good hero, but he let people down last, last Halloween. And I think because of that, they're setting us up for a good one this Halloween. Uh, that being said, it's a gamble. That's that's just my gut feeling, my instincts. And if I'm struggling or think it's going to be too demanding on all three accounts to go for a high shield, then I'm going to wait, hold my resources and take my gamble going for the Halloween fusion. I wanted to throw that out there for you. I don't pay attention to the two X's that are out of place. I don't pay attention to these 10 X's that are out of place. Uh, I could definitely see somebody wanting to buy some some uh, shards and try to pull a void shards to get a crisp. Come on, I want a crisp. I want a crisp bad. One day I'll get him, maybe. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But the same thing could happen today if I pulled my shards or if I bought a pack of 20 or 30 and pulled them. I could walk away with a new cold heart. You know, you never know how it's going to go. Shards will break your heart. I say it all the time. Chickens don't let you down, but shards will break your heart. So I try to save my shards, not spend money on them. And I try to save my gems. I'm trying to get back up there. And it's sometimes creating content. I've got to do things out of order. But I always try to tell you the way I would and do play my other two accounts. And I tend to play this account the same. I just sometimes have to do things to make content. And that's the only reason that I will build up a hero when it's not time. But I wanted to go over these traps. I don't want you to fall for it. I do not think... This isn't like a true monthly fusion thing. They threw this right in the middle of two. And it, if you think you can do both, absolutely, I say he's worth it. If you need that hero, especially somebody who can just sure up your team with provokes, shields, he's going to be good. He strips off shields guaranteed. So if you're up against somebody like, like a Chris, you can pull a shield off of a single hero and another buff. He's a neat hero. Uh, he's not going to do much. Well, I'm not saying he's not going to do much on bosses. Shielding is amazing. Decrease attack is amazing. So even his provoke that doesn't seem so important on a boss does land decrease attack. He's a useful champion that will get you through waves with ease. But again, he's no Brogni. And if you've already got some good provokers, my two cents is wait and let's see what's coming uh, in Halloween. Or let's at least wait and see if one or two of the epics really shine and they might be worth going for with very few resources so that we can keep saving up and getting ready for the Halloween event. Anyways, thank you for your subs, your time, the likes, the comments. Let me know what do you think? What are your plans or how do you feel right now? What's your gut instinct telling you? Is this just a bait? This new fusion event that's coming in between two? Frag a fusion. I don't know. They can be rough. But what do you think? Drop it in the comments. Do you think they're just trying to bait our, our resources out before a big one comes in Halloween and then they know we'll spend our money to get those resources back? That's what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? And until next time, enjoy the grind.